Welcome back, Lord Lovers, to the final installment of our Fulgrim trilogy. I'm Lion Drag, and in this episode, we'll unearth the fate of Fulgrim after his apotheosis and delve into the shocking revelations of his post heresy escapades. From the ruins of Isvan III to the mysterious machinations of clone Fulgrim, this chapter promises revelations that are twisted as they are compelling. Prepare for an epic conclusion to our exploration of the Phoenician's dark legacy. Following the traitor victory at Isvan V, Fulgrim sought a private audience with Horus, presenting the severed head of Ferus Manus. Horus was initially pleased, but soon realized that the figure before him was not Fulgrim, but a doppelganger. The Warmaster threatened the imposter, but relaxed upon seeing that the creature was unarmed and seemingly non-threatening. The being revealed itself as a demon of Slaanesh, having claimed Fulgrim's body and left the Primarch's consciousness trapped within. Horus, appalled by the demon's revelation, chose to keep the creature as an ally for now, resolving to rescue Fulgrim when the time was right. He and the demon agreed to keep the truth hidden to avoid complications with other Primarchs. Four days after Isvan V, Horus gathered the traitor Primarchs abroad his flagship, the Vengeful Spirit. Present were Fulgrim, Perturabo, Engron and Lorgar, with Conrad Cruz, Mortarion and Alfarius appearing as holograms and Magnus the Red projecting from afar. Lorgar fixated on Fulgrim, grew suspicious and accused the figure of being an imposter. Before anyone could react, Lorgar struck the doppelganger with his Crosius, revealing his true nature. The other Primarchs, surprised, prepared to confront the imposter. Horus attempted to calm Lorgar, who was astonished to learn that Horus was already aware of the deception. Horus dismissed the other Primarchs and faced Lorgar alone. Lorgar, recognizing the demon within Fulgrim, questioned why Horus protected such a dark secret. Horus explained that he hadn't orchestrated Fulgrim's fate, but was managing the aftermath. Lorgar, disturbed by the demon's possession of Fulgrim's body, argued that it was a perversion of the natural order, unlike his own Gal Vorbeck. Using his psychic abilities, Lorgar held the demon at bay threatening to destroy it and banish it back to the warp. Despite Horus's attempts to restrain him, Lorgar's powers prevailed and the demon was helpless against his psychic might. Lorgar, changed since Isvan V, left the council chambers to contemplate the corruption he had witnessed, while Horus reflected on the transformation in his brother. Lucius had begun to suspect that something was wrong with Fulgrim. The erratic behavior of the Emperor's children Primarch his refusal to follow orders and his violent actions, such as killing Lord Commander Eidolon, troubled him. Lucius noticed a drastic change in Fulgrim's demeanor and skills, particularly in swordsmanship. His suspicion grew when he observed that Fulgrim was using powerful psychic abilities, which was not typical for the Primarch. Lucius' concerns deepened when he noticed Fulgrim's strange and unsetting behavior, prompting him to investigate further. His investigations led him to La Fenice, the theater abroad the Emperor's children's flagship, where he discovered a haunting portrait of Fulgrim. The portrait seemed to convey a sense of horror and suffering that Lucius realized might indicate that Fulgrim was trapped within it. Determined to free his Primarch, Lucius convened the Brotherhood of the Phoenix, persuading them to capture Fulgrim. After a fierce struggle, they subdued Fulgrim and took him to the Apothecarion for what they believed would be an exorcism. During the ordeal, it was revealed that the true Fulgrim has indeed been possessed by a demon. The Primarch had used his time to learn from his captor and had ultimately managed to expel the demon, taking its place. Fulgrim explained that his erratic behavior was part of a ruse to mislead his enemies and that he had been using his experience to explore chaos and push the boundaries of sensory experience. Fulgrim's plan included the acquisition of Prismatica V's crystals to build a city of mirrors dedicated to sensual pleasure and enlightenment. He intended to join forces with Perturabo and the Iron Warriors for this new purpose, guiding his legion towards a deeper understanding of chaos and sensory exploration. As Horus' rebellion continued, the Iron Warriors defeated their nemesis, the Imperial Fist, on the world of Hydra Cordatus. Perturabo, having recently achieved this victory, was informed by Fulgrim of the Emperor's children that they wished to meet him to discuss an important matter. 
per Durabo, knowing full green's penchant for drama, suspected the visit might involve a significant military campaign, possibly related to the impending assault on Mars. While per Durabo planned for this, the Emperor's children arrived unexpectedly on Hydra Cordatus with a grand display of power, their appearance markedly changed since their alliance with Mormaster. Fulgrim met Perturabo in private, presenting an enticing offer, a quest to find the Angel Exterminators, a legendary Xenos weapon hidden within a warp storm. Despite Perturabo's suspicion, he was intrigued by the potential of such a powerful weapon and agreed to consider Fulgrim's proposal. Unbeknownst to them, a group of loyalist Astartes, survivors from the drop site massacre, was tracking the traitors. Aboard the Iron Hand strike cruiser Sisyphium, these loyalists, including Iron Hands, Salamanders, and the Raven Guard Astartes, had been conducted hit and run attacks on traitor forces. After capturing a dark mechanicum cryptographic entity, they were able to decipher traitor communications and learned of Fulgrim's plan. The Sisyphium, guided by a mysterious elder, was heading to intercept the traitors and toward their acquisition of the Angel Exterminatus. The traitor's fleet's destination was the Kron world of Idris, a lost elder world said to be favored by the elder goddess Liliad. Situated at the heart of the Eye of Terror, Idris had survived the catastrophic events that created the Warp Rift. The Iron Warriors and Emperor's children aimed to capture the sepulcher of Aisha's doom, the entryway to the Angel's Exterminator's prison. Before launching a full assault, the Iron Warriors conducted an orbital bombardment that devastated the surface around the citadel of Amon Nishak Kelis, isolating it from the rest of the planet. Following this, a massive invasion force of Space Marines and Imperial Army units began landing on Idris, setting the stage for the full-scale assault. Fulgrim observed as the Emperor's children and Iron Warriors battled Elder Revenants within the sepulchre of Aisha's doom at the heart of the citadel of Amun Nishak Kelis. The assault commenced despite incomplete fortifications, with the route into the citadel initially unopposed. Perturabo, ever cautious, had his iron warriors fortified outside the walls, preparing for any potential counterattack. Fulgrim's forces were divided into various warbands, each led by a captain whose rank was obscured by elaborate armor. As they pressed into the palace's heart, they were unknowingly washed by the loyalist Astartes from the Sisyphium, who sought another entry into the sepulcher. Fulgrim, showing increasing impatience, pushed Perturabo to hurry. Perturabo observed his brother, noting that Fulgrim was sweating light, a sign of some hidden power of strain. Fulgrim's armor strained, and his captains showed similar signs of an unnatural radiance. Perturabo, distrustful and anticipating betrayal, continued towards their goal. As they neared the heart of the sepulchre, the power within Idris recognized the Slaanesh followers and awoke its elder revenants from their slumber. Enjoying your journey to Fulgrim's Dark Legacy? Hit that like button as if you are smashing a Chaos Cultist idol. Your support fuels our voyage through the Warhammer universe and might just grant you the favor of the Dark Gods, or at least a good role in your next game. The Elder Constructs, once crystalline statues, moved with an unsettling organic fluidity, attacking the traitors from all sides. Amidst the chaos, Fulgrim vanished into the green glow emanating from the chamber center. Perturabo followed, discovering a hollow world with a central void and a blazing jade light. Fulgrim revealed that there was no angel exterminatus. Fulgrim himself was to become the weapon. Perturabo, dismayed by his brother's delusions, prepared to strike him down. Fulgrim's dark incantation weakened Perturabo, who struggled to stand. Fulgrim had previously gifted Perturabo a cloak with a Mojitar stone, which had been draining Perturabo's strength. With Perturabo's life force siphoned off, Fulgrim's transformation began. Fulgrim's form, burning with radiant energy, was reshaped into a demon prince. As the transformation reached its climax, Perturabo, his strength renewed, hurled the Mojitar stone into the abyss. A violent explosion erupted as Fulgrim's mortal shell was destroyed and from the incandescent light emerged the newly ascended demon prince, Fulgrim. The chamber was filled with a blinding light as Fulgrim ascended into chaos. The surviving Astartes witnessed the horrifying birth of a new demon prince. Perturabo, witnessing the transformation, was filled with despair as Fulgrim's physical form was remade into something both majestic and terrifying. As Fulgrim and his emperor's children vanished into a flare of energy, Idris began to collapse. Perturabo allowed the Iron Hands to retreat and led his own forces out of the crumbling citadel. 
Back a Brow the Iron Blood, Pertura Bow washed as the Eye of Terror's grip tightened, consuming the Iron Warrior's his fleet, determined Pertura Bow resolved to move forward, despite the apparent suicide mission of plunging into the Black Hole's heart. His commanders, though skeptical, followed his orders, and the Iron Warrior's fleet ventured into the Eye of Terror. In the aftermath of the Isvan V massacre, Horus' rebellion engulfed the galaxy in the Horus heresy. By the final battle of Terra, the Emperor's children had become grotesque shadows of their former selves, wholly corrupted by Slaanesh. While other traitor legions assaulted the Imperial Palace, the Emperor's children unleashed their depravity upon Terra citizens, engaging in a horrifying spree of hedonism, terror and slaughter. Billions of Terrans were subjected to unspeakable horrors, used as test subjects, sacrifices or simply murdered to fuel the traitors' insatiable desires. After the defeat of the traitor legions at the Siege of Terra, the Emperor's children became a shadow of their former selves, their deeds largely obscured from Imperial scholars. In the wake of Horus's death, a broad divine for spirit, the Emperor's children, like the other traitor legions, fled into the Eye of Terror, leaving a trail of devastation behind them. Their once grand aspirations gave way to a grim existence of raiding and internal strife, culminating in the Legion Wars. These conflicts shattered their unity and reduced them to warring warbands, each one vying for dominance. In the aftermath, the Emperor's children dwindled into a rare and dangerous presence in the galaxy. Their penchant for taking prisoners and their horrifying practices rendered them particularly feared and reviled. The fate of their Primarch, Fulgrim, remains one of the greatest mysteries. Having achieved apotheosis as a demon prince of Slaanesh, Fulgrim isolated himself on a demon world within the Eye of Terror, which he renamed Kallax in homage to his last homeworld of Chemos. On Kallax, Fulgrim recreated his homeworld and relieved the battles that once unified Chemos. Driven by a relentless pursuit of perfection, he repeatedly staged these battles, experimenting with different strategies and outcomes, sometimes even allowing his enemies to win, all in an effort to achieve the perfect victory and rewrite history. Despite the galaxy's efforts to find Kallax, only a few have managed to locate it often invited by its corrupt master or simply lost in the attempt. Following the Horus heresy, Fulgrim was last seen in real space at the Battle of Tesala in 121 Millennium 31st, where he confronted Robot Gulliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines. Fulgrim, using his demonic senses, exploited a previously unnoticed vulnerability left by Kor Ferron's Atheim Blade and mortally wounded Gilliman with a toxic blade. Gilliman was placed into stasis and taken to Macrage where he became a focal point of Imperial devotion until his resurrection in 999 Millennium 41st. Meanwhile, Fulgrim retreated into the warp, disappearing from sight. Isvan III Once the site of the Isvan III atrocity had become a dead world over thousands of Terran years. However, one surviving loyalist Astartes, ancient Rilanor, remained hidden in a collapsed hangar beneath the Precentor's palace. Having discovered an unexplored virus bomb, Rilanor, driven mad by time, crafted a beacon to lure Fulgrim back to the planet. The beacon attracted not only Fulgrim, but also a group of thousand sons from the planet of the sorcerers. Fulgrim, now a demon prince, descended upon the world, where Rilanor detonated the virus bomb in a desperate attempt to kill him. One of the thousand sons, a Raptora cult member, used a kind shield to contain the blast, but another, Vistario, dropped the shield in disgust at what Fulgrim had become. The virus bomb's effect was swiftly and total, burning alive from Isvan III once more. Yet, Fulgrim, empowered by the dark energies of the warp, was reborn from the ashes, his form reconstituted by his soul deeply scared. The death of Isvan III had failed to end him, and he remained a twisted echo of his former self, marked by the denial of his last grandeur. Before the 41st millennium, Fabius Bile succeeded in creating a true clone of Fulgrim. Unlike previous attempts, this clone was an exact replica of Fulgrim before his fall to chaos. This version of Fulgrim retained the memories of the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy, expressing deep regret for his past actions and vowing to atone for his sins. However, Bile, fearing the potential for the clone to repeat his predecessor's mistakes, betrayed him to Necron Overlord Trazin the Infinite. The cloned Fulgrim was added to Trazin's collections of historical figures on the tomb world of Solemnes. Despite his apparent remorse, Bile's fear that the clone might ultimately replicate the mistake of the original Fulgrim remained. The cloned Primarch, now a part of Necron history, stands as a haunting reminder of both the potential for redemption and the persistence of past failings. 
And there you have it, lore lovers. Full Grim Story is one of decadence, betrayal and relentless pursuit of perfection. If you enjoyed this journey through the Eye of Terror, be sure to like, share and subscribe for more deep dives into the dark corners of Warhammer 40k lore. And don't forget to join our Discord community to discuss all things Grim Dark with fellow enthusiasts. Until next time, stay vigilant and may the Emperor's Light guide you through the darkness.